this, this is the cabinet closet that uh, was in the van. See, it's oddly shaped. This rests upon the built-in cabinet that goes over the wheel well that from the floor up is 13 and 3 of an inch. And this rests on top of that and goes up to the ceiling. And you know, I can get a measurement here of how deep that is, but uh, you know, probably to about here or so. And it cantilevers that much more this way. The driver's seat would be here. The driver's seat comes just past this. So this does not come past the edge of the driver's seat. So when you're going from the driver's seat into the back, this is not in your way at all. Works out perfect. I thought you guys might dig on some of the details of this. Now, I, I, I did this haphazardly very fast. I made a cardboard template. I made these parts. I did this a couple days before I left on my last trip. And the idea for it was that the notch is here because the window is here. You have to access the window catch. So you have to be able to reach in there. I was able to put a cubby here. This will fit a gallon of water. One of those squarish geyser water jugs. These here. Whatever it's called. Crystal geyser. This fits right in there. No problem. Plus room for bungees and other things like that. The new one's going to be an inch wider. So I have a little bit more room that way. And then there's this negative space here, which is interesting. So I always planned on doing something with it, wasn't sure what. This is a template for the new shape. Uh, and it's shaped this way because the, and it goes up, it's gonna be a half inch taller here. That's gonna fit, follow the curve of the roof line. It allows me to get the new cedar to slide in right above this. It'll just come in right here. Ding, 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 ding. And actually it'll help me hold those boards up when I get over here. So that's cool. This is all changing. One of my favorite mods on this <clears throat> was the system I came up with. And I did some videos on it. These are uh, catches for casement window hasps. And those old school casement windows that open and swing into the room in your house. And this galvanized thing here is from vegetable cabinets from old school like the 1920s when they built houses this was the shelving in there so you could aerate you know your uh, fruits and vegetables people throw these out all the time well they're one inch on square welded and hey it worked out perfect for these molly two packs and so this here it fits right in there and locks in place. If I was to lock it in the top, it, these are obviously set perfect to hold this in place in the van. You've seen this in the van already. When I did this window, it was just, hey, let me just get this done. It was a little bit too tall here. This, this, this could have been smaller. This could have came up higher. There could have been a divider here, could have had a second shelf. Doesn't matter now, everything's changing. With this negative space here, when you get in the van, you open the door, you go to get in the van, you know, the wall of the van is here. You can reach in here and get stuff. And I'm thinking now, this is, uh, this is a really cool thing. It's a, uh, I know what it is. Now I'm just having a brain fart on it. It's a broad axe. So it's, it's, it works exactly like any other hatchet, but it has other added benefits to it. So it has a flat side. That's for hewing timbers to make them square, to square them up. And it's more of like a chisel grind on here. So it's flat on one side, has the angle on the other. So easier to sharpen, splits wonderfully. You might have saw me, uh, I don't know if I posted a video of me using that out in the desert or not. I made this handle, it's laminated. And the idea is I'm thinking, of course, remember now, it's going to be an inch wider. <clears throat> I'd be able to stick this in here and get that to fit into a leather strap or a wood block here. Maybe have a little snap closure thing here, keep it from rattling around when I'm driving. And that's a great place to kind of store slash hide the ax. You know, people have these things prominently displayed because they think it looks cool. I get it. Uh, it's just that there's some places you go, people freak out. They, they These are the types of people that see uh, drill tips on the ground and think that they're bullets. All right, these people exist. They're all over the place. They're morons. So they'll see this and they think this is just some kind of weapon. Oh my God, he's going to cut somebody's head off. I'm 
thinking about cutting your head off, maybe. But no, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I just, I, I joke. <laughs> this is a tool you need. You know, just processing wood and starting a fire and all that kind of thing. So if it's in here, nobody's ever really going to know that it's there. You do now because I just told you. <laughs> but when you walk up to the van, you won't really see it. And again, you open your door, your driver's side door, and you just reach in, you pull this down, and you get it out of here. There's going to be a way to you can see how that works. So, so that'll work. I think that'll be cool. Uh, what I just discovered... Now you'll notice that this is the mirror I put on there. This is a World War II signal mirror. I am going to have that. I've decided, you can see this line right here. I'll get to the interior on this in a second. I was just playing around. I was sitting in the passenger seat. And I, I just had this piece of scrap. It's about 25 inches long. Turns out that that works out pretty perfect. Um, if I was to hinge this here, it comes down. And it ends up hitting me... On this leg you know when I'm sitting in the passenger seat which is good because you can still get in and out of the side door and get into the seat without hitting the table this does not need to be some giant dining table it's gonna be 10 inches wide we'll see what happens I may have this pull out there may be two folders that can fold out uh, which would essentially make it about a 20 inch wide table <clears throat> I don't think I need that I can always add that I might do this in steps this is what I do, so I can keep changing things. It doesn't really matter. And you can see this line here now, which is it, it's interesting. So what's going to happen now is that when this folds down, this is how you'll access what's in here on the top section. So now there's going to be a bottom section instead of what I have in there. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to access this down here. I might leave this solid, and then, well, I guess I'm going to have to access it from here because... The Molly 2 packs go over here, so that's going to have to be how it is. So this is going to be either a little door that opens, which it might be, that might be perfect, um, or a drawer. Maybe it's a drawer that I just, you know, I can reach in and pull out completely, maybe even set it up on the table to get stuff out and stick it back in. We'll determine that later in the inside of this. Now let me just have to talk about this World War II signal mirror. I pop this in here, fits super snug, as you can see. And you need a mirror in the van, you know. Got to trim that handlebar mustache, but then you've got this. So it's a, the genuine article, quarter inch thick glass from a 1950 era. They made they were making these for World War II as well, but I originally found this in a World War II era. I'm sorry, a 1950 era uh, survival kit. And I loved it, so I found another one just for this purpose. You're in the middle of nowhere, you got no cell service, you're stranded, lost. You got another way to maybe signal for help there. It's just a dual purpose thing for the van. It's kind of neat. Fits perfect. I'll pop all these off, put them on the new door. So, what I just discovered and I didn't discover this when I first made it because I was in a hurry made it had to get on the road the collapsible step stool slash toilet and the solar panels both fit in this compartment no problem this right now is about two and three quarters of an inch so it's going to end up being three and three quarters of an inch this compartment size will stay the same basically bumping it out an inch this way <clears throat> this will all change I'll have a shelf here as I just was talking about There'll be a large compartment under here, probably something that slides out, and then this will go up. You'll have this stuff on this side, and then uh, I'll have to determine how to utilize this space. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have a problem having a window opening here again, so I could do that, but I have to be careful. Um, once I kind of get this built, I'm not going to cut this window out right away because I want to place it and then determine what I'm doing for the this there's gonna be that long cubby it's gonna go around the length the whole top of the side of the driver's side of the van so when I get it in there I'll make a mark I'll determine how far that's gonna come down how it's gonna be shaped here it's obviously gonna come into here quite a ways probably come into about right here probably about the size of the cubby that's gonna be going in the van right around here somewhere so I can have a space here we can reach in and get things three and three quarters of an inch is a pretty good size for here 
You can get those Taliente containers that you see me using all the time. These will fit in there no problem. Um, so coffee, things like that, <clears throat> it'll be good. So that's what's, that's what's on deck. I'm gonna try and knock this out today. I'm gonna make a hardwood edge for this. And when it comes time to make the door, I've got a lot of scrap wood over here. I'm thinking I'm gonna glue it up like I do my cutting boards and hopefully get it all vertical grain too. If I do that, it'll remain stable. One of the things I, I saw in a video recently, uh, I, I've seen it a lot in van builds. Uh, people like the wood and then they complain because the wood warps. So the wood's warping because you're not building it correctly. So uh, and what I mean by that, and this is something you'll find in my videos on cutting boards. Uh, I wasn't really prepared to show you this. I wasn't going to talk about this, but it, it kind of makes sense to do it. Here's your end grain in your wood. You'll see the lines are running this direction. So if you, this would be called the flat grain. So if you build a door or a panel, uh, a sink insert, and you've got your flat grain up, it's going to warp. That's what's going to happen. You see how the grain goes in this direction. If you turn this up, that's edge grain now. Up. If you could do it all so all your grain is vertical, and this is, becomes your surface, and all the grain's up like that, that's going to remain stable. That's how cutting boards are done. So if you're going to do a sink insert in your van, if you're going to build countertops, do your best to get vertical grain up, and it will remain stable, especially if you mill it correctly. The milling is the trick. I'm not going to go through this whole thing now, but you take a little bit off at a time. You, you, you flatten one side, you run it through your bandsaw, you let it stabilize, you run it through your joiner again. Then you can plane it, then you can glue it together, and then you're going to have the best chance of it remaining stable. Also seal the ends on that when you're done. So, uh, again, I'm just kind of showing you this, telling you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do a video thing or anything of me doing it. I may take a few pictures and post them on the Astro Van Tribe page on Facebook, but uh, when it's done and it's in, you'll see that video. So stay tuned, be good to one another, have a great day.